for for all the champions. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Whatever happens will happen. Welcome to the patch 7.22 patch note rundown with your host, me. If you don't know who I am, check the top of the page. Anyways, what do they want to say about this, aside from the fact that it's a preseason? Stay flocked here. I'm the lead gameplay producer, aka the gameplay version of the lead producer, Joe Audible Chocolate, New 001. Before you dive into the, one of the league's biggest patch notes to date, I want you to take a moment to recap this year. Okay, let's recap it. There were five different bad metas and one really good meta at preseason. All right, quick recap. Let's start with the class updates. Last preseason, we updated Assassins as a continuation. Um, that didn't do too well. And in midseason, we updated tanks. Uh, they were pretty good. After seeing the mixed impact of class updates, we decided to move away from this approach to push individual champions further in bigger and more targeted ways. Good idea. I like it. We have more targeting with ability updates, smaller skill changes on champions that might have worked. I'm going to take this off. A few years ago, but now need some extra love to better define their space within League. There are a bunch of them starting with Alistar Stampinian's way to give Rexai more teeth, more recently bringing Azir's group back, modernizing Sin Zhao. Uh, we also welcome new champions, Z Zaya and Rakan, as the ultimate power couple, Kane the walking, wall walking Shadow Reaper, Orn, your resident blacksmith Demigon. We have one more bubbling up soon. That's Zoe for people who don't know. Supports got a few more legendary item options, such as Knight Redemption and Knight's Vow. <laughs> Ooh, we, ain't, we ain't talking about Sensor this time, all right. Rift Herald's evolved to become a more strategic objective. That's they did a great job with her, with Rift Herald this year. Um, that's the one thing which all right. Look at the whole season as a whole. They killed it with with Rift Herald. Uh, maybe they need to adjust like the health numbers or damage numbers a little bit. I think they did a really good job actually. Like really really good. hats off to Riot. You made another neutral objective that was different but still impactful and that's kind of interesting to use. I like it. Just great job. Now it's preseason and we're ready to introduce some big changes you've been working on. We're combining roots and masteries onto one new system that allows you to play, customize your playstyle, streamline your choices. Yeah, 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 of course. We also talked about preseason changes for six months now, so if you haven't heard they look crazy, they might be too crazy. Okay. Before we delve into this, let's talk a little bit about runes and what they're giving up. So runes in general are... The way I see runes, and ma uh, runes in general uh, are that... They're barriers of entry to the competitive scene. And just to just like to be able to play the entire game, it's a barrier of entry. Um, and the, it's a very outdated system, and I'm so glad they're doing away with it. Because not only did you have to grind to level 30 before you play rank, but you also have to make sure you have this rune page for this champion, that rune page for this, for this champion. Some champions beforehand had like really, really specific... Uh, pages where you had to run like crit or crit damage and you had to run like yeah this and that and that and if you don't know riot actually manipulated the rune system quite well um so if you guys like haven't seen there's a couple of quints that are super op and riot make pr i'm pretty sure i didn't talk to anyone at riot but i'm pretty sure riot did that on purpose as a band-aid fix but because they don't want people buying like 16 different um quints uh, or runes. So what they did was they made super OP runes in the sense that they made uh, AP quints, armor quints, and I would say attack speed uh, quints are also along this line. And so they're over budge budgeted. So everyone, you should get it because it's the most efficient runes, or they're the most efficient quints and runes in the game. And because of that, generally everyone needs less pages. So I don't know if I just burst the bubble for you guys. I just spoiled some stuff for you, but that's kind of, in my opinion, what Riot's Band-Aid fix was before they uh, adjusting to let's not do runes. So what's my opinion on runes? Get that stuff out of here. Terrible, should have been gone a long time ago. But it's a very ambitious thing. So I think that it's great that they're doing this sweeping, crazy change. I love change because that's the reason why I still play League after seven years. And I think this is a great approach to making, making the game better. Anyways, um, Um, how do I want to tackle this? Because this could be very, this could be very interesting. So I think let me do it in reverse because the runes are the the runes or the new runes are so unique, and I'm gonna need to spend a lot of time on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the runes for now and go back to them after I I tackle the champion differences. So um, 
for people who don't know, because champions are given given like a bunch of random um, base stat buffs because you can no longer buy flat armor or like attack speed or flat health. Um, and so a lot of these changes are just going to be base stat buffs. And I'm just going to skip over them because every champion's got, got their base stat normalized for the most part. There's some champions that probably... Uh, we'll talk about it when we get to it. But like for stuff like this, which increases AD for Aatrox, base armor increase, that's just going to be normal. The rest of the stuff right here, though, that's a little bit interesting. But also, not it's five for two abilities, not going to break the bank, you know? Uh, I'm going to see if there's anything changed in any of the 130 champions or 100 champions they have in this list. If there's nothing, great. We get out of here really quick and we're going to go all the way back up to the rune pages. Or maybe we'll just tackle the items and then go back up to the rune pages. I think either of those options are good. So let's just let's just get this out of the way. Aatrox. Uh, AD, armor, nothing you wouldn't want to worry about. Okay. Alrighty. Don't care. Uh, base health, base... Yeah, everything's good. Whoa! Are you supposed to gain 20 armor? Is this just the support? Yeah, I guess for supports... They gave him the equivalent of armor quints and armor armor yellows. All right, um, and then because it gets bonus attack speed at one because it's a uh, it's, uh, it's a tank that needs that to jungle. Uh, we're just we're just gonna go through all of these because there's just a bunch of uh, bonus base armor increased slightly, tactical sweep increased by five doesn't matter, phosphorus bomb increased by five doesn't matter. Um, Arcade Shift increased by 5. Damage from any champions puts Demon Shade... What? Oh, it goes from jungle minions to actually... Any... Only champions. Oh, that's a really nice buff. I, I think the thing that Eve needs the most, though, is an ulti cooldown decrease. So... Um, I don't know how they want to do it, but I think that the ulti cooldown is too long for a champion that, like, wants to be on the map a lot. So, I think that if she was to get more buffs in this, which I think that she would need one one or more one more buff to be, like, pretty good, I would like to see an ulti nerf, uh, or ulti cooldown nerf, uh, decrease. Uh, I, I know that it used to have some iteration where her ulti would reset on kills. I think if it, like... You know, maybe decrease the cooldown when you ulti and kill someone with it. That would be cool. Maybe a little bit. You're not, not, I'm not asking for a lot. But I do think that's the one thing that keeps E from seeing a lot of play right now. Uh, base armor, base AD. There's actually nothing. It's all just base damage stat change. What about Fiora? Huh? Wait. They gave her more percentage damage? You know how everything got increased by 5 for the most part? But then why did they just randomly buff her passive? Huh, that's weird. I think Fiora's in a weird... It, similar to champions like Mundo and Soraka, I think that the fact that there's... Um, I, I, like, I call it Mortal Strike, but uh, the uh, Executioner's Calling and Bramble Vest at such low item values... I don't think they should be as effective as they are right now. I think if you when you complete the full item, they should be fully effective. But it should start at like 30%. Because you're really only investing like, what, 800 to 1,000 gold to get this really, really like abusive and like oppressive passive for some champions. And I think that, yes, there should be counterplay to certain champions built off of items. However, I don't think it should be that effective unless you're looking to build strength into it specifically to counter the champion. Uh, I think that 50% at 1 has kind of made Fiora kind of awkward to balance. Because if you're not building Bramble Vest, then, like, she's still really good. But most people are. because, And then the item itself kind of neuters her. Similar to Mundo. Similar to, like, what? Bunch of champions that rely on this kind of healing. So I really do wish that Bramble Vest and uh, Ex Ex uh, Executioner's Calling started at 30%. And the completed item was 50%. I think that would help balance a lot, to be honest. All right. Anyways, keep gonna keep going. Surprised that this is that this that she got buff like that. Trial by fire. It's random. Um, uh, only five. If it's just five, I don't care. They're just stat. They're just uh buff adjustments, right? Um, ten, ten, 
five. Okay. Ten five. Nothing. Nothing crazy. Nothing that wows me so far. The craziest thing would probably uh, so far be the Eve change, which is really nice. Um, five 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 ten five percentage. That's weird. Okay. They buffed them all over the place, but very small. Um, nothing crazy. Oh, one of the things that you should note, note is that there's a lot of junglers that rely on attack speed. Um, so, champions like Mundo, for instance, champions like Amumu got this bonus attack speed at 1. It's an equivalent of having, like, what, um, attack speed reds. You get 15% attack speed. Some champions don't get that. And so, Gragas is the one where I'm looking at it and I'm just like, why doesn't he have it? Because he needs this to jungle. Um, similar to champions like, uh, I would say, huh, I guess they wanted to put, push Kench upwards, but maybe they want to put Gragas as like a soul laner, and usually you can tell if they want to leave them, uh, as a soul laner if they have that kind of buff or not. But a lot of champions are 80 centric, like for instance Jarvan, um, did, didn't mind attack speed at all, but... And, and even Graves, right? But they're just making it so that like they just don't get it anymore, which is kind of interesting. But Kale gets it. Kale doesn't jungle for the most part, but I guess she needs it. Anyways, kind of kind of strange for me. Uh, Lee Sin, 555, five, five, nothing crazy here. Sandra, Q Lulu, Mordekaiser, did he get a... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh wait wait, 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 Wow, Lux didn't even get armor. What's a standard, what's a standard bruiser? Look, look at this. Look at this. This is funny. He got five armor. This, and, and five health. Five armor and five health. This guy is supposed to be like a bruiser, right? Uh, so let, let's just compare other melee champs to him. This, oh, whoa. Nine armor. That's pretty good, you know? Nine armor, I would say like eight to nine armor is nice, but he got like, he got, what happened, dude? Riot, Riot ran out of stats to give out, he got the Mordekaiser, and you're just like, oh, well, I guess we can't do anything. Um, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't get that many stats. Malphite got the attack speed buff, but he's not really a jungler either. Really, Maokai did? Not, but Orn didn't. Cool. Kind of strange, Nautilus did too, that's weird. Uh, nothing crazy so far. Quinn, Poppy, nope, just 10 damage. Slice and dice. It seems like for the most part, oh, I actually got buff from 5 to 6 seconds. That's a random buff to throw in. Uh, okay. So the duration increased by a little bit. Oh, there's some Ribbon players that use the Q to constantly keep their passive up. It's a, but it's like, it's not going to matter that much. It's just, it's just, I'm surprised to see it, I guess. Rum, Rumble got a 6 armor buff. This is, this is like, he got almost no buff at all. I guess they're, they're, they're equating Rumble to Mordekaiser. I would say one is a little bit more effective than the other, but... That's just me. Bonus attack speed at one. Shen got bonus attack speed, but Shivana didn't. Uh, that's so weird. Why did Shivana not get it? She got AD, but she did so well with attack speed. Sedge didn't get attack speed either. What? Um, I guess I'm just surprised by some of the options that Ride chose to give a give attack speed. Skarner didn't get attack speed, but I guess he got seven AD, so that's okay. Kench got 20 armor. <laughs> wow. Um, anyways, let's not focus on the attack speed stuff too much. Let's just try to see if there's any more changes. So, um... Hmm. 15 per level? On passive? 10 at 1? Huh. 6 armor, 8 AD, health gain... Probably one of the better stat buffs compared to everyone else. Last, we try to make Urgot's more, thing more reliable. Oh, wow. 
they're partially nerfing the Q buff because it's too good. I don't blame them. I think it's actually too good. Varus, uh, Condemn. Fallbreaker. She didn't get attack speed either. Sorry, don't want to focus on it. You still got 4% bonus attack speed at 1? That's so random. Oh, uh, so let's talk a little bit about Zaya. I actually think that they should nerf the W buff a little bit early. I think I think it makes her really, really powerful. And that she could use a very small nerf to it to, to better uh, balance the champion. Oh, Yorick. For someone who has split pushing in his kit, Yorick isn't exactly knocking down towers quite quickly. So, oh, wow. They did the Trundle buff to his Q. Wait, that's going to be, that's going to be pretty sick. Um, it, it means that if you leave Yorick for a little bit, he's going to mow down your towers. And that's cool. I think that Yorick sucks at team fighting. So he's really just there to like skirmish early and split push. And I think that that's his niche. Um, ma making him better in that niche is like going to make him get played more. So that's uh, definitely a significant upgrade. All right, nothing really changed for the champions aside from Yorick, Eve, are the two biggest ones. Uh, both of them and Urga a little bit. Both of them well deserved. Okay, we're gonna keep moving on. Uh, I'll go back up to runes at the very end. Coin line, spell thief line, targets line. Uh, all starting. I do not have bandit as a path. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, no problem. Uh, everyone gets bandit from the old masteries for free. Killing a mini with spoils of ward heals for 2% missing health in addition to the flat heal. Ooh. Uh, they're making it so that you can get more sustain for going melee champs. Okay, I thought Dora Shield already helped out melee champs a lot, but I guess this is what they're going for. Stealthy Flying, they want the increase the damage. And they increase the gold gain. That's nice. It's really nice. I don't think it even needs that many buffs. I think it's pretty good as is. Uh, Poacher's Dirt. Cost reduced. Camps poached to transform increase, cooldown between camps removed. Oh, sick, nice. So, we only need 500 gold, and it turns into a thing, and you just need a counter of four camps. That's pretty good, actually. I think that I, there's a reason. I always thought this was the dumbest thing, the cooldown between camps. Killing one, one camp, waiting 60 seconds for the next camp, just... Not great. I think that this is cool. Actually, to be to be quite honest, I don't think Poacher's Dirk needs to be in the game. Like at all. I don't, if you remove the item, no one would notice. But they're trying to brute force it to be ineffective. I don't mind. Um, it's something where it can't be too good or else everyone will buy it. But I think it's at the point where it's reasonably strong if you're counter jungling a lot. 500 gold for an 1100 gold item. Possible. Um, Hunter's Machete now gives 15% attack speed for 2 seconds after basic attacking monster. Okay. So a lot of the attack speed from old sh the old uh, runes are now put into Machete as well. Hunter's Houseman burns for additional 20 damage and upgrade 50 damage over 5 when you have bonus health from an item or effect. So it has... It's the upgrade. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Nothing really changes, to be honest. Machete is more valuable though. 50% attack speed is a lot. Okay, let's keep going. Stopwatch. Uh, defensive items like Zanya's and GA can do a lot to get you through burst heavy team fights. Um, yeah, this upgrades once you buy a Ruby Crystal. For the most part, it's it's kind of weird. Um, it's really weird. I, it's hard for me to evaluate right now. They're just buffing both the juggle items. Just put that in mind. Cool. I don't I don't know how it's gonna work out at the moment. Anyway, stopwatch is meant to be a stopgap. Use a stopwatch to get into stasis. Wait, you can buy a 600 gold stasis? <sighs> it 
It's a one-time use to immune an ability. That's literally what it says. Hmm. I know it's one-time use. This is really interesting. I, the thing is, it's like this completely negates some champions. Like, you, if you buy this uh, before a good team fight against like Zed, or like, and then you just use it when he ults you. All right, Zed now has to worry about one additional thing, uh, especially because it's hard for him to punch through a lot of the defensive abilities of champions in the first place. I don't know. It feels. It makes me feel bad because it's like this is an item that directly counters assassins uh, to some extent. Because it does it doesn't punish consistent damage users, right? It punishes burst heavy situations. Sure, it's only a one time use, but that's just one more tool that people can have to be able to stop it. And it's like if you imagine if you use it before a crucial fight in the mid game, like that could be the thing that swings the game, you know? Anyways, let's just keep going. Um Okay. Uh, these all build off stopwatches. All right, Serenia Dirk, two lethality, Duskblade two. They just buffed it a little bit. Circ Pen, oh, Penetration Staff got increased by five percent, but the Armor Pen one didn't. That's interesting. It's nice. If anything, it means Void Staff. You're never gonna buy Death Cap. <laughs> Void Staff is just even better. Uh, take that experience. We implemented the team catch-up experience we attended as a mechanic to keep support to relevant levels. The impact has largely been to snowball teams which are already ahead. Earning a killer assist while below the team's average level no longer grants bonus experience. Cool. Tone down a little bit of snowballing effect. I like it. And now we hit the home run up right here. The jungle experience. Comeback jungle experience is important to ensuring that an early game deficit isn't too hard to come by, back from. That moment it's created some weird patterns. First, it's just too much overall. We're cutting the total amount significantly. Secondly, linking to little monsters has made one side of the map raptors and crux disproportionately important. S correct. Putting the bonus on large monsters balances the size out. Cool. So uh, all the XP will be on large monsters. Okay. And they're keeping the jungle indicators in there. Honestly, I don't mind this too much for solo queue. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, it, it's now only 50 on large monsters. Uh... You'll be. This is actually really important. You being able to start reach level two by starting Wolf Camp, really, really nice. Um, but by being able to start multiple different camps on the map, it should increase the le level of like level one diversity. Uh, I think it's it's always nice. How many times people are going to use this? No idea. But options are always 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 good. Um, crop first clear XP reduction. Does that mean you can't get it? All camps are worth four monsters. I think the biggest thing that people don't understand is that a lot of people and a lot of like pro players and like high elo players talk about comeback experience as a bad thing. Uh, comeback experience needs to be in the game. Like you can't just not have it because in that case, if you ever get a lead, you just run with the game. Like every game has comeback experience. Even Dota has like comeback mechanics built in the game. If you kill someone with 10 0, I think you get like a thousand gold or something. You get like some disgusting rubber band. And I think it should be in the game, it's just at the moment too much. You, you weren't really encouraged to counter jungle as much as you were in other seasons, and it really did kind of feel that um, you didn't have enough to be able to show that you were the better jungler, which is something that every role should have in some way, shape, or form. Uh, okay, jungle monsters, extra damage to minions, uh, everyone deals Basic attack five more. Okay, cool. That's just normalizing. Um, there's a lot of waiting around the start of the game, even with evades. There's some downtime. We're reducing the idle time. Okay, your home start now is faster, but then you to get someplace, you have less time overall. Cool. Uh, we're adding 15 seconds to the select loadout part of the champion select to give people more time to pick their runes. Cool. On cap leveling, um, every game has this. It's nice. That's it. 
I'm gonna hit this really fast, but I'm like a power power user, so I'm not the person that really like is supposed. To, this is supposed to reward that much. Um, IP turns into blue essence. Cool. I have all this. Shorting one to thirty, really good. Um, I can't wait for them to. Re they should release like alt or alt accounts. I want to be able to buy a level thirty account, but I don't want to. Obviously, I don't want to buy a level thirty account. But I just think that have it directly tied to my account. I need a level thirty to purchase in the first place. Um, and it has like MMR attached to my main account, so I can't smurf. I don't care what limitations you want on me, but put me in like, put me with handcuffs. Just give me a level 30 account. Because this is really frustrating to want to play, like to have another account to play on, to be honest. Just personal opinion on the matter. Uh, changes to boost. IP boost, okay, I don't care about IP XP boost. Rotating game mode, I don't mind that as well. Um, bunch of random stuff here. Skin bug faces, emotes and loots. I don't know if I even like that. Okay, cool. Let's talk. Let's talk about the the heavy hitter. We're going all the way back up. Oh, we're going runes with forged. Okay. Um, I think I want to have a visual indicator with me here as well because it's usually better to have. Um, oh god, a visual effect with it, right? I think it's. This. All right, let's go down the tree. Um, whatever. Actually, let's take this out. We'll just, we'll, we don't need visuals. We are smart, intelligent people. We can read. So, path bonus, 130 health. Really good. Uh, Quint to four, four quints worth of health. Five quints worth of health. Um, Grasp of the Undying. Every four seconds of combat, your next base attack will deal magic damage equal to 4% of your max health. Heal you for 2%. Permanently increase your health by 5. It's really strong. Range champion attacks are halved and they gain 2 permanent health instead. Okay. That's worse. Uh, Grasp is still going to be great for me, especially for melee matchups. Uh, tanks will get this for sure. After shock, after immobilizing enemy champion, increase your armor and MR, resist. By 20 plus 30 percent, and it does based on your health. An AoE damage version, it's literally Scion. It's us, imagine if it's what Scion W with uh, uh, Fearless attached to it, pretty much. It doesn't seem that good unless you can constantly trade. The low cooldown is supposed to be that you, you can constantly trade with it, right? But it seems like it's something which would be much more effective late game. And you wouldn't give up grass for it. Or sorry, it's Lee on the W, you're right. Maybe it's better than I thought, actually. The scaling on it isn't bad. 4% of your max health. And it gives you a lot of armor and MR. Really good with champions that probably already have. Because if it's a percentage of your armor and MR, uh, stuff that that does really well with percentages, stuff like Sejuani passive, Malphite with armor, Ramus, uh, Leona, might actually use this because it just synergizes really well with their kit. For the most part, probably wouldn't take this that much. Uh, Guardian, definitely not Braum. Guards, allies with... In 175 of you, allies you target with spells for 2.5 seconds while guarding. If you and your, your ally or take damage, both of you gain a shield and activate haste for 1.5 seconds. Haste is 20% move speed. Oh. This is this is literally the, the melee support keystone. You take it to protect your AD. Okay. Uh, the, the interesting thing is it gives you haste. So move speed is a really, really valuable um, stat. I, I'm surprised it gives you 20% move speed. But it's got a 45 second cooldown. Braum Alistar would take this. That's why it says definitely not Braum. Would definitely take this. Let's keep going. Uh, strength. Unflinching. After catching a summer spell, gain 50% tenacity and slow resistance for 10 seconds. Initially, Gain 10% tenacity and slow resistance for summers, for each summer spell on cooldown. It's for you when you, if you would need a lot of CC reduction. 
Hmm. I don't necessarily know if you would take this. It sounds really nice, but you would use it for summoner spells that would that are really low cooldown. So I would say the only thing that is a low cooldown the summoner spell is smite, right? And then that's pretty much it. So you would only use this as a jungler. Uh, I don't think other champions would use it because the summoner cooldown would just be too long, in my opinion. Demolish. Charge up a powerful attack with 600 health. The charge attack deals 125 plus 30% max health in bonus physical damage. 30% of your max health. Wow. Really good for tanks. People that stack armor. It's weird. This is They're giving you the ability to Rift Herald per champion on the 45 second cooldown. I can already see people are just going to try to gimmick this like a lot. Um, overall, my initial impression is you would never run more than one of these uh, for a specific strategy, maybe like a split push style strategy, but I don't really know how you can give up. Mm. I would see you at most run like one or two, but you're giving up quite a bit for this. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know how good it would be. Uh, font, font of Life. Impairing the movement speed of an enemy champion marks them for 4 seconds. Ally champions who attack them heal for 5 plus 1% of your max health over 2 seconds. Wow. Uh, it's literally the current Bond of Stone, but not that good. Uh, it, feels, it feels okay. Everything on this tree feels whatever, honestly. Unflitchy is okay for jugglers. Uh, this one is super situational. This one seems okay, right? You're taking this if you're Braum, if you're like... Uh, in the bot lane for the most part, and this is a this is exactly the same that you would take uh, on other supports. It's it's okay, but it doesn't wow me. Uh, Iron skin gain five armor, great. Uh, shields increase your armor by five percent for three seconds. Gain five magic resist after ten minutes. Get eight armor, eight magic resist, and increase your armor and MR by, huh? All these are nice. Anything that gives you base stats are really, really good. Um, the thing about this, uh, the conditioning, is that this might this might be good for top lane, but a lot of times, especially if you're running this in top lane or jungle, but if you're bot lane, usually wants the stats really early because laning is so important that like pushing people out means the extra armor like directly converts into you know your ability to stay in lane, knock it all in, and like push the other player out of lane, which you can use to kind of deny more gold and XP than waiting 10 minutes. So it's something along the lines of where you would take if, yeah, if you're in like a tank matchup top lane for the most part. And even then, I don't know how effective that would be, but I guess it's interesting. Could definitely see, I don't mind any of these. All of these seem good. They're situational based on the team comp, but Iron Skin just seems solid all around. You know, it's something that you would pick for bot lane really easily. Uh, overgrowth per permanently gain 0.2% max health for every eight monsters and eight minions that die near you. So it's one per okay. Let me let me think about this. It's one percent for five times each. Forty monsters gain one percent health that die near you. Usually at the end of the game, if you're a support or like mid game, end game, you probably have I I could say 120 to 200. I mean, you get 3% max health. That seems awful. <laughs> that, that seems really bad. I don't see myself taking this. Heals and shields you cast are 5% stronger, increased by additional 10% cast on you. Uh, really good. Uh, especially great for stuff like Mundo or anything that shields and heals yourself super super good and increase by 10 percent when below 40 percent health great mundo loves this talent um any tank that is going to get shielded loves this ta talent when you're with karma soraka nami you'll take this as well after taking damage from an enemy champion heal for four percent of your missing health over 10 plus six over 10 seconds This seems... Hmm. 
it's there to, to be very beneficial if you take a lot of small trades. Second win. It's actually not that bad. On this tree, though, I would definitely not take overgrowth. Revitalize, situational use, really good. I think second win's actually okay. 4% is not that much, plus 6 is not that much, but um, every small amount would help, especially early game. I think it's it's especially good for like, you know, bot lane, you're taking a lot of trades nonstop. It really help you out in between your creep waves where you're looking to heal out your turret if you get shoved in. Maybe I'm really underestimating overgrowth, to be honest. But my initial ballpark is not very good. But I could be wrong. I just think I wouldn't take it over the other two if I had the choice. Anyways, let's, let's move on. For the most part in Keystones, you have everything that you'd want for, you want you had from before except for Aftershock, which could make champions that uh, scale off Armor and Mar or have Armor and Mar modifiers in their kits better. Um, aside from that, you have some really situational things that I don't like, like Demolish, Unflinching, Font. Just kind of whatever. So, but the big heavy hitters are like Grasp. Grasp and Guardian really good. Domination. Hunt and eliminate your prey. It's all about burst damage and target access. Great. Sounds like the Assassin Tree stuff that I would want to use because, you know, Talon, all this stuff, great. It really gives you 11 AD, 11 AP, or 18 AP. Great. Oh, actually cute. Hitting a champion with three separate abilities or targets for three seconds deals a bonus adaptive damage. Cool. Oh, it's it's Thunderlords. They just renamed it. Alright, cool. Thunderlords always good. Well, so I have to say. Thunderlords right now is great. For a lot of different champions will be just as good here. Predator. Uh The only, okay, well, let, let me say that. The only thing is, is that it has to be three separate attacks or abilities. That's a little bit awkward, honestly. I don't know what exactly counts for that in that situation. Um, it might be, it might inherently nerf a lot of champions where one application can proc um, kind of the Thunderlords by itself. Stuff like Fizz and MF probably can't auto pop it for, for the most part. But if it does hit, it, so it's a slightly more situation with Thunderlords that does more damage than before. Great. I don't need to really focus on this because you know what it does. I know what it does. It's good when it works. Predator. Enchant your boots with the active item Predator to channel for 1.5 seconds out of combat to gain 40% movements, 40% over 15 seconds. Damaging attacks or abilities deal. Wow. An extra 60 to 140 with bonus AD scaling. 80, 180 to 120 seconds based on level. Start the game on cooldown. Goes on cooldown. I'm interrupted while channeling. Hmm. Really good for roams. Uh, long cooldown. It's very, very long cooldown. But. It can be very good. 15 seconds is a long time. I, I thought the burst of move speed was going to be a lot shorter, but 15 seconds can cover from like your mid lane to the side lane uh, with that move speed, probably the entire time. Very good for champions like Talon, probably good for champions like Rengar. Um, anyone that you need the extra move speed for, really, really good. Can open up different gank paths, maybe not paths, but um, like types of ganks, initiations with this. I think it's nice. Dark Harvest. Champions, large monsters, large minions, drop souls on death. Uh, you collect souls to become soul charge. Your next attack on champion or structure consumes soul charge to deal additional adaptive damage. Last 20 seconds. Increase to 300 seconds after collecting 100 souls. What? It's literally threat. It's the Thresh passive mini game, and when you collect it, it's built for junglers that do damage. Is that right? 
Or you're supposed to like build it up and then you want to do like one kind of harass burst rotation and you can't proc electrocute. Um, I think it's something for assassin oriented champions and especially junglers to be able to pick up if they don't want to do predator. It's just front loads your initial damage really, really high. I don't know how effective it is because just the bonus damage alone looks kind of mediocre. But it's based on the soul essence collected, which is, it's hard for me to eyeball. It's definitely, it's, it's a weird scaling keystone that, yeah, just front loads your damage. All right. Hmm. I don't know if you'll take it for lane, but definitely for junglers, like maybe assassin oriented junglers where you don't want predator, um, it's probably very, very good. I'm actually curious how good it is for solo lanes. I don't know. Like for actual laners, it's probably not bad, especially for um, farm-oriented top lane matchups. I can see you using this quite a bit, but I can't eyeball it at the moment. I would say that this is definitely something that you're going on the jungler, though, the jungle though, to give you more oomph. And some, if you can't guarantee electrocute, this is definitely something good. Mouse, uh, cheap shot, damaging champions with impaired movement, deal. Oh, it's just extra tree damage. And there's a four second cooldown. Um, okay. Uh, a lot of champions will do really well with this. So, like, you know, Kha'Zix passive automatically applies slow. You know, Kane W applies slow. You do, doing more damage is always good. Uh, taste of Blood heal when you damage an enemy champion. Oh, healing X amount based on level. Uh, it's interesting. I think it's, it's Feast but it's based on when you hit an enemy champion as opposed to lasting a minion. Um, this makes it more situational because some champions can guarantee enemy hits better than others. A uh, good example is Ezreal Q can hit from very, very far range. Whereas if you're a champion getting shoved in, like a champion like for instance Fizz would never take feet or all, would take feats a lot, but would never take Taste of Blood because you can only do it when you're hitting the enemy champions, so, which is entirely unlikely if they're a ranged matchup. Yeah, it, it's something which promotes you being able to hit the enemy uh, mid laner quite a bit. And it gives you a lot of sustain for it. Uh, I don't know. It's something that you would not take for losing lane matchups anymore, which is something that you would take for Feast. Uh, sudden impact. I was hiding. <laughs> Twitch. Okay. After exiting stealth, they're using dash, blink, deal, uh, dealing any damage to a champion, grant you 10 lethality and 8 magic. Wow. Wow. Really? That seems pretty good. That seems really good. You're, ta you're taking this if you have like what? If, if you're taking it, if you have Cat, if you have Talon, uh, pretty much every single assassin has a mobility move. I don't know if you're taking it if you have Twitch, but maybe like it's not even it's not even that bad for like general damage users. It's just more it's ten lethality. Graves can use it. It's it's not that bad for any, for for non assassin champs. It's just good. Like if I if I compare this to the bonus tree damage, this affects it one one extra thing, four second cooldown, sudden impact. Great, super good. You probably take this whenever you can over the other two. Wow, really, really nice. Tracking. Okay, the one thing I did read before this was Zombie Ward. I think this is so good. They're visible, last 180 seconds, and don't count toward your ward limit. 180 seconds. It's not like some really like bad yellow trinket thing that lasts like no time at all. 180 seconds. It's literally like a blue, a free blue trinket. I would consider starting sweeper and just 
see with zombie war just to see how effective it is because it's like how much vision can i get using this yeah it's just it's just blue trinket i think it's kind of interesting um this is probably one of the first things i'm going to try out uh and again i'm going to try out getting an early super with this and seeing just how much vision i can get Uh, Ghost Poro. Enter the bush to summon the Poro after your breach channel. Poro will stay behind to give you vision until you summon a new one. If any, if an enemy enters the bush with a Poro, they scare it away. Putting on a three second cooldown. Oh, this isn't bad either. Sometimes there's areas where you want to be able to see, and there's only one path to the area, so you put it like uh, island bushes in the river, for instance, where they, where the enemy player has to cut. And with that in mind, if you, it's infinite, it stays until you summon a new one, that's a free, like, that's free vision for you. Like, all these, like, tracking things are so nice. This is just extra vision that you have on top that makes it very difficult for other people to do things. It gives you more information. And the, the information game is very, very important. Getting an adaptive bonus of uh, 6... Collect eyeballs for champion and war take takedowns. Oh. It benefits you for killing wards. Huh. I think on, on the most war takedowns I would do would be like get, running a Duskblade champion, right? Something like Talon. Uh, assuming I'm doing that with Sweeper, I'm at most clearing 15 to 20 a game uh what is that going to give me at the very end about 11 ad at the 20 mark it's not that good it might counter the zombie wards by existing but for the most part I guess because you gain a decent amount from takedowns as well, it's something that you would you might want to get uh, near the end. But even as even as an assassin, you might want to be taking the other two, especially the ghost poro one, as opposed to the eyeball collection. Because while the extra eighty might help you out, the vision is going to enable you to do more on the map. I think this is this might be, I think this is a pretty big bait. Especially for uh, champions that look to itemize that kind of stuff normally, I think maybe for supports this might not this would be a lot better because getting AD and AP as a support is like typically not something you want to itemize for. It's just extra stuff on top. But even with that being regard, why don't you just take one of these two for the support position? Eh, I think I think it's okay. I don't think it's it's as good. I I would prefer both of these over this. But maybe I'm overvaluing Ghost Poro. Hunter. Heal percentage of damage dealt by your abilities. Heals for 2.25% per uh, Bounty Hunter stack. Earn a Blood Hunter stack the first time you get a takedown on each enemy champion. Healing reduced to one third. Oh, you can have up to 12%? Oh, wow. It, re it's, it rewards you for hunting people across the map. That's pretty crazy. 12.5.25 or 12.5 percent is actually a ton of healing. You get in uh, gain 10 percent item active, plus additional six percent per bounty hunter stack. Good for champions which have um, are doing things such as. I would say people will gank, but but want the item active on their gank always. So maybe something with uh, you know Yomu's, something with uh, Gunblade, uh, something with uh, I, I think of Soul with the stupid the GLP active. I don't know if it's better than going Ravenous Hunter. I think it is actually because a lot of the people just want the item CDR. The problem is is that it 
for the most part, oh, eight. The last one is Relentless Hunter. It gives you eight move speed plus eight per stack. That sounds, that's great once you get a lot of stacks, but eight, saying I give you eight out of combat movement speed ability, that sounds so bad. I'm not feeling it. Even on like heavy, I'd rather get the other two. Like there's a situation where the healing is going to be a lot more effective and then the item CDR is going to be effective. Maybe there's some situation where Relentless is good. Maybe with like Predator, but for the most part, I think Ravenous is probably the MVP here. Yeah, certainly. Maybe junglers want to do this, right? Maybe Hecarim wants to buy this, but it seems underwhelming at, 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 at glance. Let's keep going. Precision. Well, let me recover over this. Um, everything here is very interesting. All three of these things sound really good. Uh, front loaded damage, predator, very unique boot enchant, and then thunder lords again. On this, uh, sun the impact is super good. Uh, all of these things, three things are very are good, but I think actually I don't know about eyeball collection. But the two vision things are very very interesting. Something that I'm gonna be testing almost immediately going out. Ravenous hunter seems like the greatest thing here. Seems actually super op. But we'll see. Precision. Uh, become a legend is about improved basic attack and sustained damage. So seems like the standard AD carry plus like maybe a bruiser top lane. Hitting a champion with three consecutive auto attacks deals adapt. Whoa! Deals more damage and making them vulnerable increases the damage they take by 12%. What? That's so much. And there's, there's some champions that can get this really easily. For instance, right? It's really three consecutive auto attacks. Isn't that just Renekton W? One Renekton W doesn't just auto proc, proc and you do adaptive damage plus 12%, take 12% more damage. Isn't that nuts? Some champions can do consecutive auto attacks much better. Jace is another great example of being having very very quick attack speed early. Uh, Urgot can get three autos in one second. Seems great, and it has team utility. That's very very good. Lethal Tempo: one point five seconds after damage a champion gain thirty to eighty percent attack speed. Attacking a champion extends to six six seconds is so long. The cooldown is so short. Lethal Tempo allows you to temporarily exceed the attack speed limit. Why? Okay, th this seems crazy actually. It's like if you're trading with another person, you have to keep it under three seconds. But if, it, if they're attacking, you have to keep it under six seconds. Or you have to keep it under 1.5 seconds, sorry, before it procs the attack speed. Which is possible, it's just really weird. I don't mind all of this, I just think this cooldown is really, really short. You know, typically when you have a keystone such like this, where you give a huge burst of power within a certain window, let's look at other keystones that are similar to this, right? You've got Electrocute, uh, Thunderlords, does insane damage, great damage, but the cooldown early is very long, 50 seconds, right? 20 seconds on Aftershock. 45 seconds on Guardian. Why is it 10 seconds on Lethal Tempo? Especially when the uptime is 6 seconds, meaning that it could be up 60% of the time almost. That's, it's interesting. I think it might be overtuned on first glance. Flea Footwork. Um, attacking and building energy both stacks at 100. Oh, it's, it's Shiv, okay. Uh, energize attacks heal you for oh, it's warlords. And it, it, healing is less when it's used on a minute. It's warlords, but does it's just warlords. Uh, anytime you want to use warlords right now, probably still good. I think uh, a lot of warlords users right now are very attack speed based or crit based. I think they'll they'll want lethal tempo honestly. Uh, generally, the value of warlords decreases because I think the rest of the precision keystones are actually just great, super good.
I thought the uh, the Domination had great keystones, but this is just like, whoa. Some good stuff. Yeah, if, especially because it's sixty percent less effective on minions. It seems like just not that great. <laughs> especially when the, the other two things you can get are seem ridiculously good. Anyways, this is the AD tree. You're gonna be getting this if you're if you're like Kogmar or anything like that. Should be pretty straightforward. Let's keep going. Overheal. Excessive healing will, becomes a shield up to ten percent of your total health. Shields build up from an excessive. 30% of excess self healing and 300% of excess healing from allies. I think it's okay. Especially if you're playing with something really heal oriented like Soraka, 10% of your opponent's health is gonna be like what? Extra 200 health on top. Uh, it's really, really strong against. Shields like this are strong against stuff like Assassins, uh, works on Lifesteal as well. Uh, overall, not a terrible, not a terrible thing at all. Takedowns restore 15% missing health and grant 25 additional gold. Hmm. Good for assassins. Presence of mind. For five seconds after gaining a level or take down any mana you spend is fully restored. Five seconds. Huh. This is really, really interesting. Well, who can who can just shove out mana like nonstop? Karthus, uh, Swain are the two things off the top of my head that can just shove out mana. So when you level up as Karthus, if you're going from levels of like one to two. I'm just all in level 2 every game, is what this is telling me. Casio is a good example. I want to try this, actually. When I play, um... When I play Karthus, I want this thing. And then when I all in, I literally I'm going to hit level 2. I'm going to press exhaust. I'm going to turn on my E and just throw Qs at them until they die or they flash. I think this is unique niche applications that are very strong as certain champions generally the keystone just feels kind of awkward though yeah four stack cast and ult is a really good example of something that you, at level 16 four stack ulting you're gonna just kill the guy so fast uh really really interesting for a lot of different th different um Champions that can burn through mana, just non-stop. Kassin and Karthus come to mind. Although the takedown thing, very good for Kassin too. So, don't want to sleep on it. Let's keep going. Overall, all situationally good. Uh, Legends, Alacrity. Uh, gain 3% attack speed plus 1.5% for each Legend stack. Max 10 stacks, meaning you can get 15% plus 3, 18% total. Eat earn progress for legend stacks for every champion takedown, epic tower, takedown, large monster kill, and mi It's for jugglers. Is it large minion kill as well? Does cannons count? It's just good. It just gives you attack speed. All right, solid. It's great. Gives you free attack speed. Really, really solid. Um, anyone that can use attack speed will like this because it's great. Um, the value of counter juggling with this is also good too. I'm just going to keep going. 5% tenacity plus up to 15%, so up to 20% tenacity. Uh, it's okay. There are some champions, especially tank champions, that will like tenacity a lot. Um, I could see it being used, but more situational than the f top one, where you have this plus, you know, a keystone that breaking the attack, where you can break the attack speed and a path bonus where you get attack speed as well. Uh, could be super good to just get as much attack speed as you want on certain champions, like Kog'Maw. Um, Bloodline. Gain 8 life steal for each stack. 0.8. Maximum of 10, you can get 8% life steal. It's Warlords. But on every auto. But better. After like a little bit, right? It's better Warlords without the move speed. It's, no, it, the, it's just life steal. Um, it's good.
How good is it? It takes it takes a long time to stack, right? Unless you're jungling, it's not very good. A lot of these things they take so long to stack up unless you're jungling. So for them, this is seems like a very jungle oriented um, path. Right here, the legend one. Sure, you can get on on ads and stuff. It'll be great late game, but uh, I'm assuming you want other options. Like there's got to be better options for you than this. Wait, all the minion kills, it's not even large minions, it's just minions flat. What? What's the point of having a stack that goes to 10 if you can cap it in 10 creeps? On, on the second wave, three melee minions, one range minion in, you get 8% lifesteal or 18%. Attack speed. Oh, you'll get a full stack from me. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, it's really, it's really convoluted when I'm, when I'm reading this from just text. Uh, I think since you can get so much attack speed from other things here, like you know, thirty to eighty percent attack speed here, the value of the attack speed alacrity thing becomes a lot less. Actually, I'm sure if you're an eighty carry. Um, the bloodline thing becomes good because there's a lot of... Lifestyle is actually a really valuable stat, super valuable stat. If you can stack this faster than I expect, to the point where you'll want to get this early, you'll probably take bloodline over alacrity because... The lifestyle gets you, lets you do a lot more things in life, and just in general. Okay, let's keep going. Coupe de Gras, deal 10% more damage to champions of less- Oh, okay, okay. That's an assassin keystone. This should take down on champions, grant an adaptive bonus of- Oh, you get more AD and AP for 10. That's great. Deal 4% more damage to champions with 150 more max health than you. Kill 10% at 2,000 more. Okay. It's for the counter tanks. Last stand, deal 5 to 12% more when you while you are below 60% health. Max damage gained at 30%. Uh, Trindamir. Right? It's Trindamir. That's what last... It's a Trindamir thing. And it's a Karthus thing. Hilarious, actually. When you die, you do 12% more damage as you're dead on Karthus with last stand. Uh, yeah, there's some champions that, that are really good at low health values. Um, Kindred, if you're inside Kindred ulti, um, it's really interesting. For the most part, I see not many people using cut down, honestly. 10% of 2,000 more health seems like an extremely high amount. A uh, Coupe de Gras last hand are really good. A uh, Coupe de Gras is just standard assassin thing, or just to do more damage, period. Last stand, good for niche champion. Like I said, Karthus, Trendemir, stuff like that. Sorcery. Oh god, there's still more. Oh, this five. Okay, sorcery. Unleash destruction. Oh, let me recap this real quick. Uh, Precision has some of the best keystones I've seen so far. Lethal Tempo is, looks great. Pa Presta attack looks pretty good as well. Um, really, really scared because it seems like ADs are just getting. ADs have a lot of tools. More. Why are 80s? I think 80s keep getting buffed, dude. I, I looked at this, I was like, oh, it looks okay. And I look at this, I'm like, huh. 80s got sick keystones. All right, let's keep going. Sorcery. So it's about empowered abilities and resource manipulation. You get 15 AD or 25 AP. Um, your attack ability sends an area to a target damaging enemies. It's a fairy that does extra damage and then extra shields. Okay, so really good for enchanters that shield or heal. Or, or sorry, just shield your your champion. So I'm like, assuming stuff like Karma Lulu would really want to do this. Um, and maybe it's good for yeah, pretty much good for that. Arcane Comet damage a champion with the ability hurls a comet at the location. 
If it's on cooldown, it reduces its remaining cooldown. Okay. So it does cooldown 20 to 8 seconds, single target. And it reduces cooldown every time you hit them with stuff. So Arcane Comet seems like something where you need some sort of setup to put it up. So I think in the initial clip, it had something with Lux Q. Binds are really good with Arcane Comet because it preps the Comet to guarantee the hit. Um, also, Severe Slows might be very good. Um, it doesn't seem like it does that much damage. Like I look at Electrocute damage, I'm like, wow. But the cooldown's really low, and it should come up a lot, so it can be good. Um, but you really want to combo Arcane Combat with something that slows or snares or stuns. Something on a low cooldown. Rise W might be a good, good thing. Any stun, stuff like that. Uh, phase Rush. He a uh, champion with three or more stacks uh, grants 15 to 40% based on... Uh, Storm Raiders, okay. Oh, the only melee champions get 75% slower to, for the really. A lot of mid laners were taking this, or some mid laners were taking this, some range champions were taking phase wars like like Ezreal Jungle take this and to be able to ignore slows or is super super strong. But not as melee specific. A lot less it's gonna affect some of the junglers for sure. Huh. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Keystone-wise, it seems okay. You know, this is what you're going to be taking if you're shielding champion. Comet seems alright, doesn't look great. Phage Rust seems situational utility. Okay, let's keep moving. Nullifying Orb, when you take magic damage, it will reduce your health below 30%. Gain a shield... Oh, oh. The text from here. 40 to 120 damage. Really good for, for uh, what should we call it? Uh, AP mirrors or against AP assassins. I think having that extra defensive tool could prevent you from dying. Something that you want to situation, uh, situationally take against stuff like that. Phase is a good example, like cast and all this kind of stuff where, especially if you're taking an assassin versus assassin mirror, this might save you to the point where it becomes very relevant. Um, every 60 seconds, your next ability used has its mana cost refunded and restores 8%. So every 60 seconds you get Bard Chime. Is that is that it? Or you get uh I mean it's a free use, so it's Lissandra plus like a, a restore. It, it doesn't seem that great. It's okay. It's alright? <laughs> You get a free spell every 60 seconds. I mean, it seems like this is relatively mediocre. The ultimate hat. Your ultimate cooldown is reduced by 5%. Each time you cast your ultimate, it's cooldown is further reduced, reduced by 2%. Stacks up to 5 times. Uh, initial thoughts. Karma is going to be OP with this. Really, really good. Like, anything with a really low cooldown uh, is going to love this. Uh, but it's not something that you would take, like, just to stack it up. It's something that's only situationally good on a couple of champions with, with cooldowns where the lower CDR helps out a lot. Diana is a great example of something that's really good. But I don't even know if you would use it on Diana because of other resets, you know? Yeah, Zillion would be really good with it. Um, let's keep going. So, Excellence. I'm not overwhelmed by any of the stuff in sorcery so far. It seems kind of whatever. Transcendence. Gain 10% CDR when we reach level 10. Ooh. Each percent CDR exceeding is converted to AD or AP. Uh, gain 4% move speed and eight, add 8% of your pull-up move speed to your AD or AP. Oh, it's only 8% of your bonus. Um, this is something you would get on Hecarim, right? Something where the bonus move speed means a lot to you. Absolute focus, while above 70% gaining adaptive bonus of up to 24 AD or uh, really good for poke oriented champions where you're not going to be falling low a lot. So stuff like Xeris, stuff like Ziggs, uh, you, you're going to be backline, you're going to throw stuff out there, you're not going to be low. 
And with that in mind, it's just flat, like 24, 40 AP. Really, really solid, um, but built for like, you know, the sieging champions that aren't going to take a lot of damage. Uh, so you may choose one of the following Scorch. The next ability hits champions on fire, dealing... What? That seems so... Okay. You just do more damage after... One second. 20 second cooldown. Uh, it's alright. Uh, water walking. Gain 25 movement speed and an adapted bonus of... 18 or 30, Wall and River. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You only get it when you're in River. Gathering Storm, every 10 minutes gain AP or AD adaptive. Now this, this is, this is a high number right here. Plus 168. Uh, I could see supports getting this because it's not it's not based on their level. It's based on the time passed, and that's actually like a decent amount of like AP for supports. Um, so this is like nice. I don't think this is great, but it's okay. Why does this tree feel like it sucks? Is this just me? They've got situational situational ability only like really enchanters. You got situational phase rush that no longer works on range champions because the soul resistance is only melee now. Um, you have situational mana blind flow, uh, situational defensive stat. You have a hat that's situational for certain champions. You have um, this is cool. The CDR is nice for sure. Situational movement speed buff. Um, situational use on poke champions. Um, it sorcery seems like this would be the tree where if you're a spellcaster that doesn't fall under uh, domination, right? That's not like a uh, assass AP assassin. You'd one that takes this tree, but it, overall, it doesn't seem like it. It's great to be honest. The only thing that I look at is like, wow, karma seems pretty good. You know, you got this, you got this to get lower cooldown. You have more CDR here, we can uh, as well, and you can get like extra thing shielding over or, uh, on one of the trees above there. So like, karma just seems great. Like, if there's one champion you guys should test out, just test out karma. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be OP or like very, very, very good. Um, the Gathering Storm thing is something that it'll be okay. You know, this is all right. It's not awful. It's just okay. And everything else here is just okay too. All right, let's go down to Inspiration, the uh, quirky tree. So Outwit Mere Mortals is about using creative tools and bending rules. So you get increased potion elixir duration. Uh, or AD or attack speed depending on what path bonus you guys get. Okay, so a bunch of this is like a really weird tree Should be the strangest tree in general Unsealed spellbook gain a summoner shard at two minutes every two and then you can exchange one summoner shard. Oh Okay, so this is where You this is the exchanging the summoner spells It's kind of interesting to limit you to where you can't buy smite items unless you start with smite and this is really nice. The Summoner CDR is reduced by 25%. That's so much. Hmm. I know a lot of people were, were talking about this beforehand, saying, wow, this is... can't believe Ryan would add this to the game. Give it, you're giving up a keystone that's like this. Lethal Tempo for this? I don't know how much use this is going to get. I'll be completely honest. Maybe it'd be cool to start with Smite and then change Smite off to something else. Uh, so you have more relevant uh, combat Smite. 
or combat summoner going into the mid late game? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's something where I can I can see its use if it's got a really weird use case scenarios. Like if you want a defensive summoner at the beginning to deal to help with lane, and you want to switch off to a teleport in the mid game, so that you're able to. Um, run a more aggressive like or like a very interesting like split push one three one style with your team or four one style with your team you could do that with this it gives you different things and it's definitely creative so i guess it fits the tree very well um my initial thoughts are it's not going to be as strong as people think because you're giving up a lot to use this glacial augment basic attacking a champion slows them for two seconds increases with strength over duration um melee attack slows more than ranged Slowing a champion with an active item shoots a ray of frost through them, freezing the target near bright ground. Slowing all units inside for 50%. Wow, that's so good. Cool, that's 7 seconds. It's Frozen Mallet, right? That's it. It's Frozen Mallet. You give me Frozen Mallet for free. Uh, it's... I, I know the strength of Frozen Mallet. It's very good. It's very, very good. It's, it's, it's super good. Like, the slow is going to be better for you against a lot of matchups. If you've never played against Nar, if, um, if you've ever played a melee champ against Nar with Frozen Mallet, you pretty much don't like, you don't enjoy living. Um, this is going to be able to get you to that point much quicker. So, uh, very situationally good. I'm a little bit scared for certain, like, I guess, top lane matchups. Situationally very, very, very powerful. Kleptomancy. After using the ability, your next attack on a champion grants bonus gold. There's a chance you'll also gain a consumable. Alright, I've been tearing about Ezreal the entire day. Yes, Klep this seems great with Ezreal. You're laning with Ezreal, you have this ability. You're getting consumables and bonus gold left and right. Seems just phenomenal. Uh, Gameplay can Ezreal are probably... Th you take this to the bank, right? Uh... So this is a very, very situational thing where you go on either of those two. The fact that this, I don't know how much bonus gold it is, but it pushes you to a spike faster. Gameplay might be, he might be able to hit a spike very, very quick with this. Especially if Gameplay's playing against like a top lane melee matchup where you just want to farm. That with this just goes ballistic, right? Situationally, two things situationally very, very good. One thing situationally, I have no idea, honestly. Uh, probably not as good as people originally think, but can be used for very, very unique strategies. Uh, let's go to con Contraption. While well, Flash cooldown, replace it with Hex Flash. Oh. <laughs> this is interesting. I like this. Okay, so my initial thoughts on Hex Flash are, is that, okay, it is a 20 second cooldown and you channel two seconds to blink in the new location. So people might ask me, this seems stupid. You're just, you're just CCing yourself for two seconds to get to a new location. This is what I would do. So I would take Jarvan, or maybe not Jarvan. Maybe Jarvan is a poor example. Something where you want to use Flash and you can Flash on someone level two to kill them. Let's say, yeah, you, you want to take, uh, let, yeah, let's just say you take Jarvan. Uh, and you level 2 gank mid lane, right? Uh, then you, what you could use your Hex Flash to do is kind of like go over Dragon and Baron Wall for really interesting, uh, while saving your EQ for very, very interesting gank paths. Uh, this is actually would piss me off mid lane because what you can do is you can channel it over the wall and then because i usually ward the river near island i have to start warding the bush right next to middle lane which doesn't give you that much vision on river if i start seeing people abuse this which would literally be sending you send yourself into the bush over the wall to where i can't see which i think would be was funny super funny i actually have to be paying attention to people are Using this. I'm definitely going to do this when I'm playing jungle. I'm going to just like 
take this flash on someone literally level one and just use this to do the dumbest gank paths ever, which I think is great. At 20 second cooldown, you can do some really, really, really cool, uh, dumb paths, which people are not going to be expecting. Uh, biscuit delivery. Gain a biscuit every three minutes until 12 minutes. Biscuit restore 15%. Uh, increases your mana cap by 40. So you get four and you get 160 mana. Okay. Champions without mana restore 20% missing health instead. Uh, is it immediate? Oh, that's a pretty nice like immediate heal. Huh. Um, I think this is just, I guess it's everything in the tree, right? It's very unique, situationally good. I don't think people will use this that much. Like, I value the Hex Flash way more than this. Um, it's okay. 15% of your max health. Huh. I guess it's really good for skirmishing, right? 20% of missing health. I don't think it's that good. Just straight up, I can, I can, I'm just looking at this, I don't think it's that good. Funny, you might, you can bait people really, really well with it, but I think I take over a lot of different other things, uh, trees in this. Uh, perfect timing. Start the game with a commenting stopwatch that transforms the stopwatch every six minutes. Uh, oh, you get 600 gold item for free at, at, at 6 minutes. Uh, it reduces Zanya's GA, Guardian Stone Plate. Uh, it's okay. It's something you take that you don't want to take. For the most part, it's something you take where you're just like, okay, well, nothing else is better. Um, I think this has the most unique uses. Coolest thing, everything else. Good, but you wouldn't give up other trees for it. Uh, magical footwear. Uh, you get free boots at 10, but you cannot buy boots before then. For each takedown, you acquire the boots 30 seconds sooner, okay? Uh, slightly magical boots gain you additional 10 move speed and upgrade to 50 less. Wow, that's really nice. So it's 300 gold at 10 minutes. Future market. You gain debt to buy items. The amount you can borrow increases over time. Um, you start with... Debt doesn't become available till two minutes. Okay, just okay. I read this and I'm just like, if you're an Orn player, just buy, just go this and see what happens. I don't care. Like if I'm playing Orn, who cares if I go into debt? I love. I would love to go into debt if I'm able to get in there much quicker. So if I'm hitting my my uh, what should we call it, my buys like a minute up ahead of my enemy lane opponent, that's so good. This is this definitely like just looks like. Super good for for uh, for Orin. Also pretty good for for supports who might need it uh, and don't get that much gold here and there. Uh, minion the materializer. Start the game with six minions that killed and absorbed lane minions instantly. On cooldown for the first 155 seconds, absorbing a minion increases your damage by four percent against the type of minion permanently. Plus it the additional 1% for each additional minion of that type absorbed. It's to help you push. But all the best pushing champions don't need this. Even If, if you do 20% more damage to lane minions, is that really worth going down this tree? I thought you could cheese with it, but you're only allowed to use... It's like something where you would use it to deny... Uh, a 39% total increase. Oh, I guess it's pretty good. I guess it's not bad. 30% more damage to melee minions. Maybe it is a lot better than I originally gave it credit for. I would then mark this as interesting, would have to try myself. 
Singe is the champion that I'm thinking about for this, but I just don't think Singe would... I don't know. I guess it's good for me because I could just use it to kill cannon minions and then there's a less chance I kill I, I lose cannons. So maybe this is actually just... This is better than that because this means I don't miss that many cannons, right? And it's, I miss a lot of cannons on stream, Jesus. All right, right, let's keep going. It's it's okay. This is the most interesting, the magical footwear and the dead thing. Support supports and this is worth like 300 400 gold. Uh also decent for support, to be honest. And even mid lane, top lane, it's not bad. Oh, now this is this is nice. Uh 5% CDR, max uh cooldown reduction, summer spell reduction, item reduction. Great. Just flat CDR on top of there. Super good. Um, gain 10 movement speed toward any nearby allies that are movement impaired. Or any champions that you impair. Cool. Just great. Uh, it's really, really good for you as an extra mobility thing. Uh, especially if you have things that uh, make them slow. So a good example is if you mouth IQ someone, gaining an extra 10% move speed on top of that. Probably pretty nice. Also being able to protect your your teammates, pretty nice as well. Celestial Body, oh, 100 permanent health. 10% less damage to champions and monsters until the 10 minute mark. Okay, uh, this, is, this seems pretty good. I think uh, if you're a support, you'll take this, right? Because 10% less damage, sometimes, especially if you're playing stuff like Janna, doesn't really matter that much. Um, at least in certain matchups. And then top lane, if you're uh, a hundred. It's a hundred health. Hundred health is a lot. Uh, if you're playing like a really far more into a top lane matchup, you can do this as well. You won't see this on many other things. Maybe on the jungle here and there for the most part. Yeah. For the most part, not so much. Yeah, and on, on the, as a melee support, like something on Alistar, hundred extra health for the, lo the lower damage you do early. Who cares? It's good. That's okay. Uh, a lot of these are situational for inspiration, but Cosmic Insight, really, really good. Um, Celestial Body is situationally good. Magic Footwear. They have a bunch of things on this tree that are just like, huh, that's interesting. The thing that, that scares me, actually, is is just how, how good is Karma going to be? At some, at some point, you take Summon Airy with 5% CDR, and I'm sure you can get, like the ultimate hat right you just go down these two trees and then you just end up having like a 50 percent cdr 20 percent off your ulti just i think karma's actually gonna be nuts karma's gonna be a good champion we'll go with that karma's gonna be a very good champion that's the first thing i think of right here um I think that's pretty much it. Uh, instead of looking to build up certain things, I will say, I'll just go over the trees and what I think are better than expected. I think Resolve is about normal. It's what you'd expect. Very similar to Live. Domination, um, your Assassin plus Burst Tree. Very, very good. All three Keystones look great. Um, and they have a lot of nice things like Ravenous Hunter to have Sustain. And even some like warding things as well and sudden impact to do more damage really really great tree uh precision great 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 tree lethal tempo press the attack look great um you have stuff like uh free life steal free attack speed um and then more damage super good keystone for ad's uh sorcery seems understated for the most part except for for airy where you'll be going if you're a shielding champion for the most part, Arcane Combat is situational, Phase Rush is fairly situational. You have a bunch of situational other things with just one or two things that are like, I would say good. Um, with that being like what, Transcendence, uh, maybe Gathering Storm if you think about that, Ultimate Hat for some, some people. Um, and Inspiration is just gonna be that wonky thing that you'll take uh, here and there, unless your name is 
game Planker Ezreal, which will take Kleptomancy and just ball out with infinite gold. So overall, um, it's going to be really interesting tomorrow. Honestly, I'd love to talk more about the rune page, but one, it's almost 2 a.m. And two, uh, it's something where I don't do well on this kind of stuff at a glance. This is something where I'm going to need to try out a lot before I talk about it. And especially because it's such a sweeping change, it's going to take me a couple, like, it's going to take me a couple months or like weeks to months to be, get any kind of really good information about this stuff. I'm sure first week, XYZ is super OP. And then like a month later, someone's going to find something that's going to be like, wow, have you ever considered this with this? Really good as well. And so uh, definitely something where I'm really excited to play it, to be honest. Really surprised. Sorcery does seem a little bit weak, but for the most part, you can find a lot of other things in the other trees. So pretty excited for everything. Uh, I think I said it covers Zoe as well. Which, you guys just don't want me to, like, live, to be honest. Because... I... <laughs> oh my god. It's... It's painful, man. It's literally almost 2am, but sure. Let's talk Zoe. Okay, so Zoe, uh, first... Initial glance at her when I was at Worlds, or Legend, sorry, uh, League of Legends Live, I thought, hey, this is a mechanically intensive mid laner, uh, AP Yasuo, AP Riven kind of champion. Uh, I know in advance, Froggen played this champion, play tested the champion, told me it was, I think he told me specifically that it was really, really fun. Uh, and usually, if it's fun, it means that you can do a bunch of wild things with the champion. So, um, kooky, childish appearance girl young girl but actually ancient being so that yeah you know why i said that anyways let's keep going so what does she have uh, after casting spell is always next basic attack deals bonus magic damage okay very very standard cool very very standard uh so after every ability, you'll be trying to string in auto attacks after every ability to maximize your damage. Okay. Paddle Star. Fires a star that deals magic damage in a small area and applies her passive. Okay. She can recast Q midair to redirect the star to a new position near her. The star oh, she, the star's damage increases based on the distance that has traveled in the straight line. Okay. Oh, so he could do more damage if he fired away and rubber banned it? Oh, that's sick. That's pretty cool. Spell Thief. Every summer spells and active items cast drop spell shards on the ground for an extended period of time. Some minions also drop spell shards when they're killed by Zoe. Collecting a spell shard grants one cast of the item or active ability. When casting any summer spell, Zoe briefly gains bonus movement speed and tosses missiles at the nearby enemy. Each missile can trigger a passive. What the heck? Her abilities are so overloaded. Okay. Cool. Drops a flash. Okay. Uh, well. This is very unique. Super cool. Makes the champion. Steals active items and enemy summoners. I don't know what else to say. Really, 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 really crazy. Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Who named this? Zoe throws a ball that detonates on the first target hit, dealing magic damage and making the, the enemy struck drowsy. Uh, okay, new keyword. After a couple seconds, drowsy enemies will briefly fall asleep and take extra damage for the next spell. Oh! When an enemy falls asleep, this ability's cooldown is reduced. If the bubble hits nothing, it lingers in the ground as a, a trap cast over a wall gains casting range. What? There's so many extra things on all her abilities. The idea is to sleep and then do an insane Q, right? A, an insane Paddle Star to do like a bajillion extra damage. Okay, let's see, let's see it. Wow, so you don't even get that punished for throwing it on the ground. Okay, 
Portal jump. Briefly teleports to target positions and teleports back. During the teleport, you can use abilities and attack normally and see over walls. However, you won't be able to move. Dude, she has so much mobility. What the heck? Mobility, CC, and unique damage sources. Dude, this champ is going to be crazy. I, I, I actually am going to enjoy playing her a lot. Even though she seems really complicated. Is it it's a 10 second cooldown? Jesus. That's crazy. Ask me if you're six year with back four six. Oh my god. They she hit him. Do you see this? She hit him with the sleep, okay? She threw her Q backwards. And then she got sleep, and it does extra damage when it breaks. Okay, she hit with that, and then her ulti. That's pretty sick. You sleep, okay. Wow, that's, she's cool, honestly, she's cool, she's going to be super frustrating to play against, she's literally AP Yasuo, that's, that's what it's going to be. She doesn't have wind wall, so she's not as frustrating, but she's going to be really fun to play, maybe not so fun to play against. Um, it's going to be interesting, I'm going to enjoy, enjoy playing her. She looks so fun. Also, this is a great skin. The uh, the Persona skin. Nice job whoever made this. Alright, it's 2 a.m. I love you guys. I don't love you guys that much. I'm going to play some ads. I'm going to get some water. I'm going to find out why there's people talking outside my door for the last hour and a half. Then I'm going to get some sleep. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. That curly guy 95, welcome.